I have a question for you. Have you ever killed an ant? Be honest, was it death by bug spray? Or the laying down of poison, perhaps? Or maybe a massacre by magnifying glass? Don't worry, we've all done it, myself included. But now guys, have a look at this man for a moment. His name is Milton Levine. In the 1950s, Milton invented a little plastic toy enclosure that holds some sand and a little bit of plastic shaped like a farmhouse. He called this invention an ant farm, and it was designed to house a colony of creatures most of the world normally wants to kill, ants. Milton was a visionary and knew there was something about ants that was totally magnificent and relevant to us people. And you'll find out what that is by the end of this video. You'll also be surprised to know how many ant farms he's actually sold to date. And I'll also be revealing that in a bit. But first, if you're new to the channel, you may be sitting there thinking, gross. Now why would anyone want to keep ants as pets? At least a dog, cat, or horse can show you affection, right? Fair. Ants can't lick your face. You can't stroke an ant with little tiny tweezers. And you certainly can't ride them. But what if I told you pet ants can offer something so much more satisfying? Most of you AC family and longtime subscribers of this channel already understand and are deeply infected hard with ant love. Despite you guys proclaiming not even being insect people prior to subscribing to this channel. So AC family, have a seat because this is a video particularly for the newbies curiously wandering into this strange part of YouTube. For you newcomers, what I'm about to show you today will completely change the way you see ants. And by the end of it all, perhaps the next time you see an ant, you may just choose to not only not kill it, but appreciate why millions of us in the world, including myself, have decided to keep ants as pets. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. First off, to understand why people keep pet ants, you gotta take a look at how ant keepers start their ant colony. Basically, it all starts with a queen ant. That's a queen ant right there in the tube. She is like the seed of your colony. She lays all the eggs and keeps your colony going. Every worker ant she lays only lives for a couple of months max, but the queen, she lives for decades. Word has it that the longest lived queen ant on record was close to 30 years in a German laboratory. So how do you get this queen? Well, there's a special season in the year when new queen ants are available to capture. You see, during the spring and summer months, every species of ant has its own specific period when they execute an incredible annual event known as a nuptial flight. During this nuptial flight, young virgin queens and males, both of which are born with wings, emerge from their home birth nests, take to the air, and mate while flying. They make love in the sky. Imagine that. That love is so fantastic that the males die afterwards as they'd have fulfilled their purpose in life. Then the now pregnant queens drop to the ground, break off their wings, and seek a hole in the ground to start their ant colonies. Now as the ant keeper, it's our job to try to find one of these queen ants wandering around in search of a nesting site. Once you've caught a queen, the next step is to place her into a test tube setup. This test tube setup simulates the little hole in the ground, called a claustral cell, that she would have created in the wild. Now what happens in this test tube claustral cell is totally miraculous. Sitting quietly in her test tube setup, she begins her epic journey as queen of her future colony. She doesn't eat as she's 100% focused on raising her first generation of her army. She subsists for a month or even longer on energy stores in her wing muscles. Her body becomes a self-feeding, soup-making machine as she lays eggs which hatch into larvae, which she then feeds her self-made soup Drawing from these wing muscle stores, the larvae then eventually pupate and finally become worker ants. These worker ants are her critical final cry for survival because they must survive to bring her food and care for her future young. 
the success of the entire colony relies on the effective teamwork of this first generation of ants, known as nanitics. The nanitics are pioneers on a mission and are just incredible to watch. They break out of the claustral cell, search for food, and bring it all home for their single, widowed, and starving mother. So you see, this is better than having a dog or a cat or horse. Ant keepers are witnessing real life ant drama in a test tube. Now to all you people who've said you've killed an ant before, how does it feel knowing you may have destroyed a single widowed mother's last chance at survival? <laughs> so at this stage, things get even more intense, not just for the ants, but for the ant keeper. Now you have a queen with her nanitics who are needing food and space. And this is where the ant keeper gets to play the role of God. Admittedly, another attractive aspect about ant keeping. Me personally, I'm a benevolent god. And truth is, most of us ant keepers are. So as soon as these nanitics arrive, I move them from a test tube to a full out ant farm, like this. So this section here is the nest part known as a formicarium, which simulates their inner nest, which I can peek into at will. And this container section, called an outworld, acts as their outside world. So I, as their lord, must give them food, and I place it into the outworld. The nanitics come and find the food, grab a bite to eat, then make their way back to the nest through these cool tubes, leaving a pheromone trail on its way back, and tell the rest of the nanitics that it hit the jackpot, and to follow the trail it left to the bounty. Now guys, Here's another reason why ants are so fun to observe. You literally get to see from a god's eye view their social media. Yes, ants have social media. Not using internet, but using pheromones. Biochemicals produced by their body. An ant can leave a pheromone in an area with a specific message. Like, here is food. And it's kind of like posting a tweet. Any ants coming into the area and smelling the pheromone has the choice to retweet the message. And this continues on and on until all members of an ant colony are made aware of the original message, even from far away. This is how when you're eating on a picnic, it only takes one ant to discover your sandwich before a whole line of ants come marching in to grab a bite of your goods. In ant keeping, you can literally watch messages make its way back to the colony in the nest and visibly see the excitement of the ants that clearly go whoopee as they dash out to go eat. It's so fun to watch news spread within an ant colony. All messages, including messages of danger or intruder alert, spread in the same way. Messages are always traveling through the members of an ant colony at all times. And the bigger the ant colony, the quicker these messages travel simply because there are more members to retweet the messages, and messages trend. Now as you give more food, the colony grows larger and larger. The queen lays more eggs, and soon you end up with a massive army of millions of ants that you've grown from just a queen, kind of like this. In a year or two, the ant keeper now is the owner of a massive ant city, which he or she must not only feed but also clean up after. They leave all their garbage at a garbage site in their outworld, which you must clean up regularly, as well as their dead at a grave site. They establish bathroom areas in their nest, which also need regular cleaning. Ants are quite clean and systematic and need to be to survive. If you're like me, you can get around cleaning duties by keeping the ants in bioactive vivariums. So little critters and life forms like springtails can do the cleaning up themselves as they would in the wild. As the colony evolves in some species of ants, there start to appear specialized workers, like really huge super majors, which specialize in cutting things up, and really tiny miners, which are excellent at handling babies. It's a tiny society housed within the space of a tabletop. Another thing that makes ant keeping so much more interesting is that there are literally thousands of ant species, shapes, colors, and lifestyles to choose from. Check it out. Have a look at these turtle ants with these huge disc-like shaped heads, which are used to plug the entrances to their nests. Imagine having a door as a face. And check out these Dracula ants. These scary looking ants suck the blood of their own young 
by making tiny incisions in their skin, which heal after the adults feed. The adult workers fatten their young with food so they can produce the blood needed to feed the workers. Mother Nature can be so dark. And check out these leaf cutter ants, which cut up leaves from plants to carry back to the nest, which they use to fertilize their expansive fungus gardens, which they feed from. They don't eat the plant pieces, just the fungus. They are farmers and have been millions of years before humans ever existed. Look at these Fedoli ants, which stroke colonies of mealybugs until they excrete a sweet byproduct called honeydew. Yes, ants have also been tending and milking ant cows for millions of years. And some of my favorites, the famous weaver ants, which use their young silk to glue massive leaf basket nests together in the trees. The transpiration occurring through the leaves acts as a natural humidifier within their treetop hanging fortresses. Mind-blowing stuff, right? But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's more. What's most incredible is their efficiency. Regardless of how big an ant colony is, every ant gets fed. No baby starves. They erect massive structures overnight. They keep their living quarters clean. They communicate effectively and work in perfect synergy. But it requires we humans to keep up with them. It's not just a one-way relationship. The ants depend on us. The ant colony as a growing functioning city demands that the ant keeper keeps up with his or her duties of constantly providing clean water, food, cleanup, ensure temperature and humidity is just right and protect the ants from plagues like mites and fungi and earthquakes by not shaking the ant farm for no reason. Which brings me to the final reason ant keepers like myself love to keep ants. Here on the channel, we have a term called ant love. It's something that describes that feeling I'm about to describe now. Ant keeping taps into that very deep desire in us humans to care for life. We ant keepers are not caring for just a dog, a cat, or a horse, but an entire nation of individual lives that give us nothing back but the sole gratification of knowing we are helping them live out their best lives. This to me is the most important reason for keeping pet ants. Because imagine the young person who masters caring for a little ant population. Wouldn't you trust them as adults to care for our human population? Ant keeping enriches one's worldview and sets up the stage for the culturing of future government leaders, engineers, architects, farmers, doctors, lawyers, all career fields which require some skill set applied in ant keeping in some way, shape, or form. It's an understatement to say that ant keeping has changed my life. I've been ant keeping for several decades of my life now, and it's opened me up to an incredible world of discovery. This ant YouTube channel here, with one of the most exceptional communities on YouTube, has almost 3 million ant loving subscribers. Today, I'm the owner of millions of ants of many species, and I've even ended up making ant keeping a business, along with a great team of ant lovers and an online shop that sells ant keeping supplies and ant farms worldwide. Now, remember the original ant farm by Milton Levine? Ready to hear how many have been sold? You may be surprised to know that Uncle Milton Industries Inc., the company of the late Milton Levine, who is now lauded as the godfather of ant keeping, has gone on to sell over 20 million ant farms globally at the time of his death. Perhaps now you can see what Milton saw to be so magnificent and relevant in the ant back in the 1950s. Ants are us. And so, the next time you see an ant, instead of killing it, maybe, just maybe, you might consider keeping it as a pet. It's ant love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? It was a little different this week, but I felt we needed a video to help promote the ant keeping hobby a bit more, which was the original dream and purpose for starting this channel in the first place. Special thanks to biologist and nature photographer, Alex Wild, for allowing us to use his incredible ant photos for this video. He is my favorite ant photographer and friend. So check him out at alexanderwild.com and order some brilliant, high quality prints of his ants. 
and other insects from his gallery. There is still so much more ahead in the Antiverse, guys, so if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out in the real-life drama of the inhabitants of the ant room. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the Northern Hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching queen ants now. And in case you didn't know, we've got all the top-of-the-line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels, from beginner to advanced as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse through our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you'd like to watch a playlist of relaxing hidden videos on this channel with footage of ants and other creatures to the sounds of relaxing music, go explore and enjoy nature shot in 4K. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what were the Rhino Beetles competing for in these Rhino Beetle games? Congratulations to John McCabe, who correctly answered, the Rhino Beetle games were for the rights to breed, shelter, and all the food they need. Congratulations, John McCabe. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is a claustral cell? Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.